Hello guys and gals and welcome to another episode of Unique Items. Um, today we're going to be looking at an Assassin Claw that is um, not too difficult to find. In fact, I usually see a bunch of these. Um, it is called the Shadow Killer Battle Cestus. The Shadow Killer Battle Cestus is an elite item, so it is not upgradable. Um, it is one of the very few items in the game that can spawn ethereal and indestructible at the same time. Um, these are generally items that are pre-programmed into the game, and this is one of those items that's pre-programmed in. Um, so it will always spawn indestructible and will always spawn ethereal when you find it. Um, this particular item is um, 172 to 201 damage, 100 dex, 100 strength requirement, uh, which is 10 less than a battle cestus actually requires because of the ethereal nature. Um, it is level 78, which does postulate it at an endgame level piece of equipment, um, which means you're not going to be able to use this on your way up. It's something that you're going to choose to use uh, you know, after you've already leveled up your character. Uh, we also have a 33% chance to cast level 8 Frost Nova on Striking. Um, so if we were to take this out there and we were to, uh, you know, like kick some monsters, uh, you'll probably see a pretty healthy number of, uh, of, of Frost Novas come out as we kick. Uh, there you go. There's a couple of them. Frost Nova, Frost Nova, Frost Nova, Frost Nova, Frost Nova. Now, as you can see, these particular monsters are completely unaffected by my Frost Nova because they are, of course, um, immune to cold. But if we were to go somewhere um, where the monsters are not immune to cold, like, say, the River Flame, well, there's sometimes there's immune to cold monsters here. Let's, uh, let's see if we get lucky. Um, the Frost Nova would actually have a very nice effect of chilling all monsters nearby, uh, which is actually a pretty cool effect of having a spamming Frost Nova, which means that pretty much as you're fighting, all monsters within range would just constantly be frozen, or uh, not frozen, rather, but chilled uh, while you were attacking. Um, and Frost Nova has a large enough radius that the chill is going to apply to most monsters nearby. Now, the damage on level 8 Frost Nova is insignificant, and for the most part, it's just not really worth talking about. But just as a, uh, to be thorough in this video, let's look up what level 8 Frost Nova does. It is a 23 to 28 cold damage attack, uh, which is an AoE, of course, and it has a cold length duration of 15 seconds, uh, which is going to get cut to one-third um, in Hell Difficulty. So uh, in Hell Difficulty, generally all freezing effects are cut by uh, basically 66%, so one-third of their normal effectiveness. Um, so that 15 seconds very quickly uh, goes down to a lot, lot lower. Um, we also have some other nice effects on this weapon. Uh, so we have a 220% enhanced damage, uh, which since this is ethereal, it gets a very nice 50% enhancement to the base, and then the 220% enhances that afterwards. So we get a very nice amount of damage. Um, and even just a small percentage of enhanced damage um, can make a huge difference on this weapon. So when we have 170 to 220% enhanced, which is the variable, um, the closer you are to 220, the better the damage of this item will be. Uh, we also have a negative 25% target's defense, which is always nice to have on any kind of melee weapon, because it reduces the defense of that particular monster by a huge percentage and allows you to have uh, you know, an easier time hitting them and require less attack rating to do so. Um, it also comes with Freeze's target plus two. Now, Freeze's target um, does, in fact, work very well. Um, in normal difficulty, and it works decently in Nightmare. But in Hell difficulty, as we were talking about earlier, there is a penalty. Essentially, all monsters have like 66% resistance to any kind of chill or freezing effect. Um, so it's like a 33% uh, or one-third of what it actually states. And uh, most monsters won't stay frozen for very long in Hell difficulty unless you really stack on the Freeze's target's effects. Now, you can stack on the Freeze's target effects. So you could put a Cham Rune in here. You could wear an Ice Blink. Um, there are some other items in the game that have Freeze's Target's effects, and you could bring it up as high as possible. Um, cold Damage also affects this, so things like a Raven Frost or Cold Damage Charms or whatever you may have that has Cold Damage on it will actually increase the duration of the Freeze's Target effect, so keep that in mind. Um, all in all, though, Freeze's Target can also be a downside especially if you're trying to um, have corpses, like maybe, for instance, you were trying to use Death Sentry on your uh, assassin along with everything else. Well, you can't because you're going to be destroying the corpses. So, uh, so keep that in mind as well. 
Uh, we also have plus 15 to mana after each kill, which does vary by 5 points, so 10 to 15. 15 to mana after each kill is a lot of freaking mana after each kill. Um, in, with this on, as long as you are killing monsters, you will probably never have too much of an issue with mana uh, consumption. Um, it could be argued that you could probably put another mana after each kill jewel in here. Um, I actually usually find like plus three mana after each kill jewels with other really nice effects. So you could potentially build this up even higher and use it on maybe like a trap sin or something like that just for the mana after each kill so you never run out. Um, then of course because it is indestructible and it is um, ethereal, you can also socket it. And uh, we have to talk about this socket as a feature of the item. Uh, because if a normal item was ethereal, you would have to zod it, right? So this is an additional socket that you can do something with. Um, you can put any number of things in here. You could make it faster, which it might need, because it is, unfortunately, no increased attack speed on this particular unique item. Um, you could add another Eth rune to bring it up from 25% to 50% targets, uh, negative targets defense. Um, you could add a Cham rune, as we talked about earlier, to increase the Freeze's target effect. Uh, you could add a Tear rune or uh, a good jewel or something like that. You could add 15% 40. Um, there are a lot of different things that you can do with the Shadow Killer Battle Cestus to make it even more of an interesting item. What are the problems with it, though? The problems are is that it doesn't have any plus to skills. It doesn't have any increased attack speed. Um, the other issue is that some of the effects don't take effect if they're on your other hand. So let's say you were utilizing a different weapon in your main hand, and uh, you were trying to get some of these effects on the target. Well, it only really affects if you hit with that weapon. And some skills only hit with one weapon, some skills hit with both, but then you have to actually physically strike with both weapons, and it has to hit with that weapon. Um, the effects on this that require um, a hit or freeze the target, obviously. Freeze the target requires you to actually hit the target. Uh, negative target's defense, I'm pretty sure, requires you to hit the target as well. And the 33% chance to cast level 8 Frost Nova also requires you to uh, hit the target. Um, so these things may or may not trigger depending on what hand you have them in. Um, as you can see here, I'm not getting any Frost Nova anymore because I swapped it to my other hand. Um, as soon as I put this back, in the main hand, you will notice the Frost Nova will start proccing again. And that is simply because Dragon Talon does not utilize your offhand effects like that. Um, and again, back to the, uh, the Shadow Killer being in my offhand, and you notice I'm no longer getting any of the Frost Nova procs. Which, 33% chance to cast Frost Nova is a pretty high percentage. Um, that is going to go off all the time like crazy. And having an AoE chill like that that is in constant use is actually pretty darn sexy. Don't get me wrong. Um, I don't think the damage is worth anything whatsoever, but being able to make sure that every single monster around you is blue, and they are constantly blue, and they are never going to not be blue unless they're immune to cold or immune to frost effects um, is actually really cool. Um, all in all, the Shadow Killer Battle Cestus is one of those odd ones that um, doesn't really quite get utilized a lot. I think simply because, well, I don't think melee assassins were ever really even that popular. Um, and uh, recently, they did do a lot of changes to the melee assassin. They fixed a lot of the skills, changed the way they way worked, made some of the uh, finishers, uh, ba well, all the finishers, basically, um, not require attack rating to hit, so they will guarantee their hit. Um, I mean, there are a lot of very interesting things that they've done with the Melee Assassin over the 2.4 patch, and um, this weapon could be a little bit more useful um, in the future. Uh, the problem is, is is that it doesn't really have a lot of the things that people are looking for specifically. Um, if you're a, for instance, an elemental damage assassin, Melee Assassin, you're not really looking so much for physical damage as you are for plus the skills and things that will enhance your elemental prowess. Um, and uh, so that means Phoenix Strike, Blades of Ice, Claws of Thunder, and Fists of Fire are all kind of out the window with this weapon. Um, this weapon would be more focused on things like Tiger Strike, um, Cobra Strike, maybe even uh, the Finishers as well. Pretty much all the Finishers would probably work well with this weapon. But the 
the actual like elemental damage claw skills probably not so much I mean you could utilize it just so you have really high physical damage along with your elemental damage but I feel like you'd be better off with a weapon that would actually give you the plus to skills for instance that you might need like Bartux gives you plus two and plus one which is plus three to martial arts um, and is going to give you a pretty decent amount of extra elemental damage with that build. There are a lot of different ways that you can build a martial arts assassin, and um, and Shadow Killer, I think, is one of the ones that finds a hard time actually working its way into those builds. Um, unlike some of the other options like Jade Talon, which um, really function very well as just kind of like an offhand shield for stats, giving you all resistances and, and, uh, and plus to skills and things like that, um, Shadow Killer Battle Cestus, I feel like, kind of has to be either in the main hand, or the only reason you would put it in the offhand is for that plus 15 to mana after each kill, which is really sexy, I'm going to be honest, um, and is one of this weapon's biggest bonuses, um, especially if you were to lean into that and beef it up even more, perhaps finding something like an all-resistance jewel that has plus 3 to mana after each kill on it, and then you would have 15 all-res with plus... 18 to mana after each kill, which could literally sustain you <laughs> in, uh, almost completely in most mana situations. Uh, but you know, that's completely uh, neither here nor there. Um, it's definitely one of those ones that, um, that gets a lot of people scratching their heads as to um, where they could effectively use it. Um, let's go over to Silo's Pen real quick, and let's take a look and see where you could potentially find this item if you wanted to locate your own uh, battle killer, or shadow killer battle cestus. Almost forgot the name of it. <laughs> shadow killer battle cestus. <laughs> Let's go. Bink. All right, so uh, this is a sort of an end game level item at level 78, so we're going to assume 400% magic find. And uh, we're going to do bosses. And uh, look at that. Not a lot of monsters. Not a lot of monsters on the list. Uh, quest Fag, Quest Fag. So ignoring those, we got Diablo, Bale, and uh, Mephisto. All pretty good chances, but just kind of a really small list there. I would say Hell Diablo, probably your best bet. He's the easiest to farm. Uh, you just see he'll pop him, kill him over and over again. Uh, 1 in 441 chance at 400% magic find is uh, pretty good. And then uh, as for super uniques, uh, super uniques, we got Neelafak at 1 in 3,414. Not bad if you uh, if you follow my video on how to kill him or how to find him. I have a whole video on how to find him, and uh, it will help you out tremendously on how to find him really, really fast. And he's really easy to farm once you get things down. Uh, Pindle skin, 1 in 5,250. Um, if you're farming him for other items anyway, you know, probably wouldn't hurt. Uh, da, 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 what else do we got here? I mean, these guys would be on the way to Diablo, or sorry, uh, that's on, on the way to Bale, which isn't really too useful. I mean, that's 1 in 26,000. I feel like we're getting way down too deep there. I mean, Hephaesto the Arborer, uh, 1 in 5,901, actually isn't too bad. Um, he's actually pretty easy to get to and to kill. And then, of course, Lord Decease, Infector of Souls, and Grand Visor of Chaos are on this list as well, uh, which really solidifies Diablo in my mind. So if you're going to farm for this particular item, it does look like Hell Diablo is definitely your best bet. Anyway, as always, I do appreciate you guys and gals watching my videos, even when we are talking about the ethereal, indestructible, shadow killer, Battle Cestus. And... Um, Keep watching.